That happened. E3 time. E3 time. So we are here. It's E3 weekend yeah. in progress. Uh, this will obviously be airing on Monday, but we're recording late, late. No, no, it is Monday. It uh, is Monday. Uh, just we really, are recording really on Monday. Really early Monday. Yeah, yeah, very. Um, so there's that. Uh, Mr. John, Monday. what's going on with you? Anything new? Oh, you know, just working a lot. Um, finally started playing the Tomb Raiders, beat Deus Ex. The, 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 the modern trilogy? or Yeah, the okay. modern trilogy. Is it going to be and a trilogy only, or is, is there... Uh, I think it's done. I think. Oh, well, I think this is done. I don't know. Well, oh, that's cool. Then I can breeze through them all. It is and it isn't, but we'll talk about that some other time when it yeah. becomes more relevant news. Um, uh, and Deus Ex, hell yes. Yeah, Deus Ex. It felt uh, kind of unfulfilled. Like, the first one, I know it wasn't slated for a sequel, but yeah. um, it, it felt a little more satisfying than this one, especially because it's kind of open-ended. Spoilers. <laughs> um, what else happened? What else happened? Uh, oh, later today, in fact, in uh, about 12, no, 14 hours, I'm going to be... Uh, Mastering my EP, so that's cool. I really thought you were going to say something else, and I was going to say, I don't think we're going to have to say that on the podcast. What? I, I just heard. What do you think I was going to say? What, uh, what, what I was, was going to say, say, that's an interesting thing to bring up, but I took care there of you go. Good. Not that. <laughs> the other, good also. Good on you either way. So there you go. Hell yeah. How about well, there you, you go. Man? How's your week? Uh, pretty good. Dropped a bunch of unnecessary money on some Samsung shit. I bought my Note 9 back in January, mm -hmm. and I loved it, so I went back, uh, I, I had the S3 and the S4, loved it back then, switched to the Google phones, and I'm switching back to Samsung, so I went all in, got the Galaxy Watch, Galaxy yeah. Buds, chargers, you know, so fuck it, oh, you know, the and buds, um, are they pretty, uh, they're pretty good, pretty uh, like, like, they're, like, they're tuned by uh, AKG, so they're actually, oh yeah, they actually sound good, unlike the uh, uh, AirPods, so <laughs> good shit there. Um, this is a me opening a five hour, because it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, your day especially, my day like, was shitty, but yours has been shitty and long, so mm. there you go. All right, anything else? That's it. Let's get into the week. Oh, wait, no, let's get into last week, because what did we forget to talk about last week, John, that we totally dropped the ball well, on, we totally and we could have talked about it when it was relevant in Fallout 76, no, Death Stranding. Mm, yep, exactly, we Death dropped, Stranding. Uh, Death Stranding. Um, so, I know you like Metal Gear Solid, right? Fantastic. Uh, and Fantastic. obviously I, I do, too. It, now, man. I'm really into a lot of the, you know, like, Suda 54, Sweary, Kojima... Uh, Platinum Games, all the really, Left like, uh, uh, Yakuza weird, series, yeah. obviously, exactly, I'm on the very Japanese, do Western, obviously Japanese-y games, mm -hmm. uh, which I know you're not too in tune with, in terms of that kind of, that particular type of zaniness. Yeah, it's not that I don't like but, it, I just don't... Yeah, you're just not, not engrossed, exactly, yeah. you're not exposed to it, that's the best way to put it. Yeah. With that being said, with as Japanese-y this style and Kojima as this is, in that trailer mm -hmm. that we saw for Death Stranding, what did you think of it, from um, an outsider's point of view? Because for me, I'm hyped instantly because of how stupid it is. Um, so, <laughs> that's a great to me, it. that's not <laughs> fair, and I can't give a fair opinion to someone who so, might have seen it and been like, oh, well, I'm, I don't know, I don't really play games like that are weird like that, so. I mean, let me put it this way. My first experience with Metal Gear is 2. Mm -hmm. So right from the, like, right from the start, weird. I was like, okay, like, what the fuck, the fuck, is, fuck is going on? And then I played 1, and I was like, how does this fucker know what I'm playing? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I don't think it's, I, I mean, it seems par for the Kojima course. Okay, yeah, but it I definitely like seems more Kojima he, than some of the other examples in, we gave. He, he took a lot of influence from his buds in this game. Okay, like, yeah, that's like a he, good he point. Built, it, it seems like he built certain parts for his friend. Like, he built mm -hmm. parts for Mads, he built parts for Norman, mm -hmm. he built parts for um, uh, uh, Guillermo, and like took a lot of influence from Guillermo, because this, movie, and this, this game is creepy as hell. And the thing I love about... But it's not scary, it's just creepy. Absolutely. And the thing I love about this is the fact that he really was like, you know, he was with Norman and, and uh, Guillermo and just was just like, after Silent Hills was nixed and mm -hmm. was just like, fuck this. Do you guys still want to do this? Yeah. Like, it may not be this, but you want to do this. And yeah. then they did it. And I love the fact that I don't think Guillermo was going to be in Silent Hills as far as anyone knows. Yeah. So with that being the case, I love that he was just like, come on, bro, you in too. Like, like I love it that they all went in. They got Mads too. Yeah, no, they got out. It great. looks familiar. The one that gets licked in the trailer by the uh, by Die Hard Man. I don't. Um, I mean, she does. She looks but familiar, I but I just I just could it. be thinking yeah. of some other chick. But yeah, uh, the name doesn't. But I'm fairly sure. Like if I look at him, I feel like I'd see him in the credits somewhere. You know what I mean? Like in a movie well, I've, I've seen, seen or her name, but like I still yeah. can't place it. You know, like I, but I don't know. That'd like, be she the does case, look familiar. That's one of the things I think will. Uh, the hype is definitely there for Death Stranding. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious if it'll carry it to astronomical numbers in terms of like. Can the casual or outsiders, I don't say casuals, that's not fair. Yeah. Can the people outside of this weirdness 
get into it because of names like Die Hard Man as the name of characters. <laughs> I know. Um, really, so really it's, and it's not even German. It's not Die Hard Man. It's, it's Die Hard Die Man. Hard man yeah. Because this is Kojima we're talking about who likes to name people stupid shit like that, which is great. Hot Coldman. And that's and it's so Kojima. And I love what uh, Pat from Castle Superbee said before, which is or was it Wooly? One of the two. But it was Castle Superbee for sure, where they basically said when Kojima did Metal Gear with uh, Konami. There was definitely someone there to be like, maybe you shouldn't call it that, maybe you shouldn't do this, maybe you shouldn't... That guy is not existent anymore, and Kojima does what the fuck he wants. I'm great. sure within reason, I'm sure there's still, obviously, an editor or, and someone who's advising him. Mm -hmm. But with names like Die Hard Man, I clearly, not telling him too much. No, this is his So this it's is all Kojima, Kojima studio, and I love like, it. Oh no, yeah. I'm very curious when it hits this November, which a lot of people didn't expect it to be that soon. Yeah. Um, I, I was very curious, mm -hmm. will it land with the masses? There's gonna be, it's gonna sell well. The loyals will be there. Of course, the Kojima fans will be there. Obviously, Metal Gear Solid Five did great despite Kojima's the whole shit. No wrong to us. But. Yeah, but with that being the case, will it, it with the money you can tell they're sinking into this with how good it looks, the actor payroll and everything, right, and obviously I see the uh, collectors with the baby and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that being the case, will it land? Maybe not Call of Duty numbers, but I wouldn't say. I would like to imagine maybe close. Would it really hit that? Well, it all depends home run. on what we see more. Which I don't think, knowing Kojima, I, I don't think that this is this is it. Because at the end, where Mads is, what, what does he say? I'll show you. This is you know. I'll show you what really what's really coming later. Like I think this is just something. I, I firmly believe this is something Kojima is just putting out now to shut. Every, tell him to shut the fuck up. Basically, just, wait. It's the Final Fantasy. It's the Final Fantasy Seven remake progress report. Essentially, yeah. Because a lot of people were saying Final Fantasy VII Remake doesn't even have any progress, it wasn't done, it's not coming. March 3rd, There's 2020, no such thing. bitches. Exactly, yeah. so we got that uh, announced recently, so yeah. Anyways, wrapping it up on Death Stranding, I think it looks cool, I'm sure you'll be excited. Big fan. We'll probably look into it uh, together and separate, so Maybe we'll go stream, from there. Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool, I'd, I'd really like to do that. Speaking of Detroit, we need to get back <laughs> to that, because it gets really good, I want you to... Oh, God damn I know, it. I want to play We it. need I'm to get excited. into that. We need to start doing like day... A, a we'll set aside. I, yeah. I, we gotta set aside another day, because that's hard to do on the same day as the streams. Uh, you guys are need to, uh, you guys are peek behind the curtain. Okay, no, back on back on the stage. We're gonna cut that. Out. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 we're good. We're not. I know. Um, now now that's in there. Okay. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> so E three time. A lot of stuff happening. Uh, the Surge two uh, has been announced. The Surge was a weird game because uh, did you remember it? Uh, uh, it was the it was like the darks. It was the Souls like, uh, but like like not steampunk, but I don't know chainsaw hand harness. Kind of gritty, post-apocalyptic, like, kind of. Sure well, it's post-apocalyptic. Anyways, I, I've never it was one of those it, games yeah. that starts out and you're like, "This isn't too bad." Souls like not bad, and then it gets really shitty towards the end because it gets like unnecessarily difficult, kind of Cuphead esque, like God not really it. fun anymore. Yeah, you know what owner. I mean? So they kind of overdo the Souls like they got the all right idea at first, and it was a little boring, but at least tolerable, and then it got really bad. Mm -hmm. But Search Two. Let's hope they learn from their mistakes. We'll see. I forget the name of the studio who does it, but whatever. Uh, Rocksteady, of course, announcing that they will not be at E3, so some anti-E3 news. Mm -hmm. uh, Rocksteady did, uh, is confirmed to be working on a DC Arkham something around those lines game. Interesting. Obviously, we know Rocksteady for the Arkham series. So they're supposed to do some related franchise. However, obviously, there's not enough progress to be showing at E3, or they want to kind of hold their load. Uh, so nothing at E3, but do know that it is coming. Maybe a so. good Superman game for once. Exactly. Uh, so later today, we're gonna hear, we're gonna see more from this Ubisoft panel. But we have Watch Dogs Legion was actually leaked through Amazon UK. I know. A full on like description. <laughs> I forgot if the artwork was there, but like everything basically regarding the game. Jolly good. And what I think. So I think mm -hmm. I, I don't want to like put words in your mouth, but I want to say you enjoyed Watch Dogs more than I did probably. Watch. Dogs. Yeah, not two. Two, I was like, okay, this is cool, this is neat, mm -hmm. but I, it, it was a bit too much. It was a little too hipstery, a little too San Francisco. A little too much, me, right? Yeah, okay. I, I liked Fair him enough. So I thought he was a good protagonist. Mm -hmm. So speaking on that line, and that's interesting because like I don't know, I just couldn't, I couldn't grasp it. I guess I just was. No, I know. Like I, I'm an, I'm feeling. But I'm the an thing that's the thing that's sad about it is that I felt like it was a cool idea though. The premise and everything. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, even though it's stupid from a tech guy's point of view, <laughs> yeah. uh, like to me, I'm just like that doesn't even what. Uh, I still think it was a cool premise. So it's a little shame. But anyways, the did you see the details on what the gameplay is supposed to be like, or supposedly the details that were leaked on that page? No, I, I haven't. So it's gonna be you know open world sandbox. 
London only, so it's going to be taking place in, yeah. in the old UK, as you kind of hinted at earlier, obviously. Yeah. But the weird thing is, they say that it's going it, it, to... So the, the premise is it takes place in a post-Brexit London. So it's all post-apocalyptic, apparently. Right, you know, right. Right, right. But they said it's pretty much a shit show, essentially. Is Theresa um, May still the PM? So Theresa May doesn't, get, doesn't resign. Basically. <laughs> um... And so they year. say that in the world you can play as any PC, any PC, any NPC. any NPC. And the weird thing is that they say it's like fully voiced, fully unique animations, unique characters that you can switch between. And uh, I don't know, like I think it's a cool idea, but I'm just like, what is this like? I don't know. To me, that seems really ambitious. Like, yeah, like any NPC, this is, ooh, really? like not like five like, different ones or whatever. But um, can I be David Tennant? <laughs> right, just switch to him. That'd be interesting. Right. Yeah, but that, that's that's really ambitious, you know. As much as uh, I would like to jump into anyone, this is kind of yeah. That's how sounds, do you how do you do that? And to say that they're all going to be uniquely animated, if they at least said, and I know this is going to sound fucking stupid, but if they at least said everyone's going to be generically animated, I believe maybe that. five animated sets between a hundred people or something. Yeah. like Okay, but are there going to be like twelve people on the street? Then I guess that's possible. But like, it's it's weird. Hold on, I want to look up real quick. What, yeah, go for it. So the population of London currently uh -huh. is eight point one three six million people. Tell me, Ubi animated eight point one three six million. Well, characters. being realistic, no one actually expected that. But even if you broke it down to NPC traffic, saying like GTA or something, yeah, which is still hundreds of people, there's no way. Yeah. Like, uh, it's ambitious. Props to you if you do it, uh, Ubi. But come on now. I'm guessing the idea is you're hacking the people. I don't know some weird shit like that, or you're I don't know influencing them. <laughs> yeah, know. Apparently, like hence Legion, some shit like that has to do with you I know get, we are well, Legion. So what's the premise then? That they have like cybernetics in them? Like Brexit? No, I'm sure. Got it. Just one. <laughs> to say that again um i don't know <laughs> uh well at least this game has npcs <laughs> at least there's that uh of course um sony is not going to be at e3 that's a known thing everyone's known that sony mm -hmm. has uh declared a long time ago that they're not going to take part i don't remember if they said an e3 ever again but at least not this year no i think it's um, just this year so they're skipping out but these uh the boss man still did drop a few details uh, he did say that the solid state drive is going to be the default method, not an op not an optional thing. Because people are wondering, maybe there's going to be a cheap version, expensive version. Always happens with all these new consoles. No, he said it's going to be default. Console. And he said with it to be um, fitting in the realm of like the fast load times are promising. It has to be solid state drive. It can't be you know fucking needle on the fucking disc uh, hard drive anymore. Uh, with that being the case, though, I guess it, you know it's going to be an expensive console because you got to look at it this way. You know, I drop a G on my Note Nine, mm -hmm. and the new Note Ten is going to be twelve hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So my if the phones are costing this much, you can imagine that the console is probably like going to cost quite a bit. Like, yeah, okay, even, at okay, least, at least, that yeah. Way, then a grand seems generous, like. right? So. Yeah, he also did mention it's going to... And here's the thing we have to always take with a grain of salt every generation. Because this generation, we were talked about how 1080p, 60 frames. There's like 12 games on PlayStation 4 that run at 60 frames. Mm -hmm. It has the potential to, but it doesn't mean it will. Yeah. Uh, thus, you take this with a grain of salt because it was kind of said in a walk around -y way. But it will have support up to 4K, 120Hz refresh. So it's going to be really fast, really smooth. Any of you who have the Razer phone will know that that smooth display is hard to get rid of when you got a fucking 120 hertz refresh rate. So it's interesting. Like, again, ambitious for everything we talked about before. Ray tracing, solid state drives, uh, you know, 8K. fucking, <laughs> yeah, 0.8, uh, 0.8 second load times, so on and so forth. All that stuff being revealed. Very ambitious. Uh, we'll see what it actually promises in terms of what it actually outputs when we get there. And then B, how expensive. So we'll yeah. see. Cutting across the party at E3, since they do have a presence there, Microsoft unveiling their new console uh, titled Project Scarlet. Uh, the dev kits are out. Theirs actually seems more tangible because there seems to be actual physical uh, renderings and actual um, proof that this exists, unlike a lot of these hearsays from the PlayStation side. Yeah. Theirs are going to do 8K graphics, uh, a, a potential output. Solid state drive standard as well. Ray tracing. Basically all the bells and whistles of the PlayStation 5 plus twice as much resolution output potential. Nice. So we'll see. Kids. I thought you said it's oh. I was like, <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Uh, one very interesting thing before they actually did reveal uh, Project Scarlet being a thing is a fan uh, in a previous trailer regarding something else with Microsoft noticed... This is wild. I, this is like, where I'm like, how do some people pay attention to shit? Um, 
Notice that in the trailer, just very subtly, with the numbers, mm -hmm. was the RGB code for Scarlet. And then someone was just like, oh my god, Microsoft's going to do something called Scarlet, something Scarlet. Jesus, man. So Microsoft right. reached out to the guy, gave him a, a prize or some shit like that, gave him a old, like, hey, fucking bro. Oh, good job, you do man. Mega yeah. hidden Easter egg, and you fucking notice that shit. I don't know if he builds websites and uses that code to do Scarlet all the time. Maybe it's his favorite it's thing on a website. Yeah. He knows the code by heart. Yeah. But a very wild thing to notice in a trailer that, had nothing, that wasn't even really... A, the you know. same dude that discovered Sombra. <laughs> I, I know, right? Uh, but yeah, no, it's interesting. But uh, yeah, so uh, Microsoft trying to big dick PlayStation. It's interesting because Microsoft took a lot of this lying down for the last couple of... Maybe two or three years. Yeah, last generation. Last generation, generation essentially. Least, you know, yeah. that's it's fair to say. Um, lying down and it really now seems like Microsoft's like you know what we mean it's almost and I know it's gonna sound douchey it's gonna be that guy to do this where they're gonna be like oh yeah we knew we, knew we were gonna lose so we actually were just working on that rebound instead of fucking mm -hmm. trying to fight you this gen and don't think that's the exact thing per se no however when they saw the writing on the wall because it wasn't too far into the generation that the writing on the wall was there that PlayStation was pretty much gonna beat Microsoft yeah I feel like they did throw in the towel a little bit earlier than later and that's kind of why you saw them just kind of die all of a sudden no exclusives no nothing but now they're coming out with these 14 games that they announced the, at their conference i only got a few of them down here that i felt were you know worth mentioning mm -hmm. as well as announcing project scarlet they were doing the work behind the scenes and you don't just pull the shit out of your ass in terms of having all this stuff ready to kind of show already no they've been building uh, so they must have yeah. been at least for a couple of years now which is why where Sony's so far early in next gen, and then Microsoft's just like, oh yeah, by the way, we're already pretty much at next gen. Yeah. With that being the case, I feel like Microsoft did commit suicide a little earlier and cut support for the Xbox One. Um, as fucked up as that is to do, as a, as you know, you got to support your product, obviously. But as fucked up as that, that seems, I feel like they did it to kind of have this big rebound, and it looks like they may, may. We'll see what the launches look like. Because PlayStation and Xbox have both had their share of, of shady launches and mm -hmm. lack of games. But we'll see. We'll see. Now, of course, 8K output's a little unrealistic. People barely have 4K TVs right now. That's just starting to become affordable. 8K TVs cost like 10000 bucks sometimes. It's so it's, it's very niche. Yeah. But it all scales. So 8K means you can do 4K. So fuck it. it what their point is, is you if you happen to be Rich. Baller Central that <laughs> yeah. has an 8K TV, you can actually use the potential of it. Yeah, There's not much right now that you can. So, yeah. you know. We'll see there. So it's funny that, you know, Sony did that last week and this week. Microsoft's like, oh, yeah, and just fucking... For those, obviously, the audio, I just fucking flicked off, you know. So we'll see if that happens. Microsoft said, prove it. Now, here is a combination of words I'm about to say in a sentence that I never thought I would say uh, in, the last, uh, in the last few years. Destiny is doing something interesting. <laughs> so oh, yeah. that's, that that's something I didn't think I would, the, I would ever utter those words unironically. So, I'm Destiny 2 bugs. is, uh, obviously they broke up with Activision, we all know that. Um, good. They broke that partnership up, which is good, because Activision is kind of the thing that kind of have been fucking... So, their partnership with, uh, who did they do Destiny 1 with? It was, was it Activision also? Yeah, it's been Activision. It's been Activision, right? Jump, yeah. So, they had a whole dev team that ended up falling apart, then they made a new one, that's why Destiny 1 was really rocky, because they switched teams in the middle... Then in two, something similar happened with Activision's bullshit kind of cutting in to Bungie's thing. So Destiny 2 also had a rocky start and uh, microtransaction nonsense that got a big criticism, so on and so forth. But anyways, what uh, since their breakup, they've really been trying to gather themselves because there hasn't been an expansion or any major update since uh, Activision was involved. Yeah, uh, This is their first major release uh, since and big move since they've broken up with them. I don't know who's publishing them now. Um, I think they're self-publishing? They're self, yeah. I'm okay, sure. So with that being the case, first of all, they're going free-to-play. Um, here's the interesting thing about whoa, that, whoa, because whoa, people whoa, would whoa. go, free-to-play, you're, kind of, you're a pay-to-play, you know, you go free-to-play. So here's how their model's going to work. It, it's very interesting. They're kind of reformulating their whole structure, and it seems like it may work out an advantage where Bungie may finally put out the destiny they've wanted to put out, or claim they've wanted to put out since the beginning. Yeah. So the free-to-play version... Is going to be called uh, Destiny New Light. Uh, it's, your it's your basic pack. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little on the nose, but whatever. Uh, it's basically going to be you get your little starter pack, you get all year one content free. Nice. Okay. So there you go. You want it? What's this Destiny shit about? You got a whole year one's worth of. Not that year one was very good. 
but know, the point being, it was still content. it was still yeah. amount of content I mean, to no get for wolves, free. Taken King, not terrible. Uh, so you can go from there, uh, and then so you can da- you can download that and kind of get yourself started. See if you will like it a lot to see if you'll like it, and then you can even have to say you can see if you'll. Um, stick with it even enough to see if you'd probably even care past the first few hours. They made that much money, damn. That's, yeah, I know, right? That's interesting. The next thing they're doing is, of course, breaking up with Activision. They're removing it from Activision's, yes, Activision's, uh, because for everyone forgets Activision Blizzard. Um, they're removing it from Activision's Battle.net service and uh-huh. moving it to Steam. So that was inevitably going to happen, but they have announced what they're going to do. So they're moving to Steam, mm-hmm. which is fine. Steam needs all the ammo they can get at this point. Um, and so, again, you get the free-to-play of the base game, uh, you get the other one content. So, they're also doing a new expansion, of course, called Shadow Keep, which will be dropping September 17th. It's going to be the first expansion, again, major release since they broke up with Activision. And so, here's a few interesting things that did happen regarding that, is that, apparently, it's a standalone expansion. You don't need Destiny 2 base game or the following expansions leading up to it to play it. Really? But why would you not... For leveling purposes. So, that much I didn't read into because, again, it's Destiny. I only care so much. I just done this much interesting. So, I'll look into a bit more, probably follow up with you guys on that. But apparently, it is a standalone. They're going to call it 35 bucks. You can just jump into Shadow Keep, some weird shit like that. Interesting. And here's the thing I find the most interesting about it all, and I hope more games follow this suite, is that it's going to feature cross saving between all platforms. So, it's going to be a launch title for Stadia. That's the first thing, which is interesting. Hmm. And it's going to have cross save between. Stadia, PC, PS4, and Xbox One. So Start on Stadia, jump over to Xbox. Something I've always wanted because I've rebought my games on PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Now, of course, you can just go, Patrick, you're an idiot. Why did you buy the game that many times? Well, because I like the game, right? But it'd be interesting to kind of get my data and move it over because yes. I'm really into Switch, so I want to move that shit over, right? Yeah. So I want to see more shit do this. Here's the funny little fun fact regarding that. PlayStation... Sony was the last to agree to do cross-saving oh, because what? everyone yeah. else signed off day one. Google, Microsoft, um, all, all on the same page at the very beginning. And uh, Steam, uh, all there, being like, let's cross-save, guys. Fuck it, man. You want to skip to your Xbox. You want to hop to Steam. You want to hop to Stadia. Whatever. Let's get in there. Sony, <sighs> Sony. waited till about, like, just four days ago. This agreement got signed so <laughs> long. And I'm not even using hyperbole. Literally... Four to five days ago, from when we're recording this, finally just reluctantly sighed and said, "Fuck, I guess." Fine, guys. fucking Sony. I love Sony, but god, <laughs> I know it's shit like that that makes so, me just right. Why do like, I like you again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah. So there's that. So interesting. Again, Destiny doing interesting things, setting a very nice precedent. Good yeah, job. in that sense, yeah, very nice precedent. So we'll see. Uh, Yoko Laylee and The Impossible Liar, the sequel to Yoko Laylee, is going to be coming out on PC, Xbox One, PS4, and Switch, which is weird because the first one's not out on Switch. So we'll see if it does get ported before the drop likely will. Maybe they'll do a dual pack. Like you but here's the thing, download. though. Oh, yeah, they could do the Bayonetta route and do yeah. Bayonetta 2 came with, yeah. yeah. Um, that being said, I will say that I didn't really care for Yoko Laylee, um... The biggest problem is it was one of those things that tried to do retro and tried too hard to do retro. Hey guys, you like it, it, it's, it's like, it's like that, yeah, basically, and that's literally what it was. It was like that band that does old school style music, but then you're just like, I could just be listening to the good old school shit, not this nonsense. I, I that's say not Greta Van like, Fleet, too on the but nose. I like Greta Van Fleet, so... <laughs> But, um, yeah, so there's that. Anyways, it was an okay game, but it wasn't great. It was a little too... The jokes were all flat. And the controlling was weird. It was like Crash Bandicoot had bad cameras back then because it had bad cameras. Tomb Raider original had bad cameras because it had bad cameras. It's 2019. Not that games don't have them anymore, but don't purposely put in yeah, shitty cameras yeah. to be retro. Like Yeah, exactly. There's nostalgia, and then there's just like, why? Were you just lazy? Exactly. Like, so, yeah, that's going to be happening. Uh, Fallout 76. Uh, <laughs> is <laughs> the fact that it's funny because John actually had no clue that I was actually going to bring up Fallout 76. Yeah. Uh, so there's, yeah, a couple so of, there's a couple of news regarding them. Uh, First of all, it looks like people are finally going to be getting their canvas bags because after much uproar, uh, they're kind of forced. Now they just really fucked themselves. They tried to cut corners and save money by not giving them and, and, and you know duping people and not hoping they don't know the difference between nylon and canvas. So now they're going to be doing that. 
you gotta understand the reason why people piss people be like, oh, it's fucking, you got your bag. It's just it's, it's, it's different. Material. First of all, you promise something, right? Leather and pleather are two different things. Canvas and uh, and uh, nylon even more far apart. This is just illegal what they did. It's exactly, all fucking it, advertising. It was. And on top of that, you gotta understand this came with the power armor version, the two hundred dollar version That's of the change, game yeah. that most people probably just bought for the bag, which yeah. is even more fucked. Uh, especially right. after the game came out, um, the decent two T fifty one helmet. Yeah. So you know, worst Fallout seventy six and their liars. Worst part of that is lies. they did make a canvas bag that they gave to fucking influencers. Yeah, influencers. Yep, that was that. Uh, and oh, Todd. And let's keep going with the Fallout seventy six news. Fallout seventy six is dropping their brand new battle royale mode called <laughs> Nuclear Winter, <laughs> and that will be dropping in actually just a few hours from us recording this. Yep. comes out June tenth, Monday today. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, Fallout 76, continuing to be original and uh, going with the Battle Royale route. We'll see. The game barely runs, so with that being the case, we'll see, what, like, we'll see how it, uh, fucking Battle Royale Holy of a bunch shit. of people. At least it would actually be people. We talked about this last time. I'm not going to get into it, but very fucking, what a game. What if it was just NPCs and you? Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's, their, that's their Battle Royale. Xbox Pass... Going on PC, we knew about that. Finally given a price tag. $5 a month. Now On PC? On PC. Wow. That's not bad at all. Xbox really trying to get their... Uh, PC Master Race. Uh, them, Microsoft really trying to get everyone, like... Microsoft's playing the whole um, success by numbers. I mean, the more people that play their games, the more people play their games. Fuck it what platform it's on. That's why they're kind of on that, that, you know, that point where they didn't just hoard Minecraft away from Sony. They were just like, get on in. You know what I yeah. mean? So... Uh, with that being the case, uh, it was really interesting that that's the... Uh, but that makes me a little salty. Unless, really, they, unless they're going to alter the, the pricing on both. That's what I'm saying, because like, I'm, well, I'm not paying... I paid a dollar for the trial, but I like Game Pass. That's why I'm playing Tomb Raider. Fucking PC Master Race getting all the nice shit. Yeah, it's really interesting. I, all could, I also could see it as an incentive for PC players, but... Yeah, no, you're right. You're right in that. But it's we have like, access to on. Halo, you know, Gears 5 when that comes out, uh, Forza Horizon 4, Ori, and so on and so forth. Everybody, so it's really it, it's yeah. really interesting. Um, the Game Pass really did bring a lot of people back from the dead that their Xbox, like mine, was literally collecting dust. Um, because you really did get to try a lot of games that maybe you didn't want to shell out money for at the time. And you were a little wary, is this good? For example, We Happy Few came out, it's a piece of shit, but I was really excited for that game. Um, is it bad or hurt? Oh, it's good. fucking it's terrible? terrible. Really? Slap, please slap for me. Slap whoever told you it was good. Because that game is the most broken. It was the Oof. original Fallout 76. Oof. In terms of running, anyways. <laughs> um, right, good, no, man. it's bad. It's fucking awful. I don't know. Anyone who... Anyone who thought that game was good must have not played it. He they must have just thought, like, how I was hyped at first, that it was going to be good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me too. But yeah, there's that. Uh, I hyped the shit out of that game. On um, Tuesday. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, Smash will be announcing their brand new fighter. A lot of people are wondering. Is it going to be Master Chief? No, it's not going to be Master Chief. No, but be uh, people are wondering about Banjo. There are a lot of ports that are happening. Like Nintendo. Like, I mean, uh, like, um, oh my god, I'm blanking on his name. What is his name? Uh, fucking um, Smash Man. Uh, oh my god. Fuck all. Anyways, Smash Man, which everyone's going to kill me now for not remembering his name, um, basically died. I was on an IV to make this game. Um, he basically said, hey, they've been in a Nintendo platform in the past. There's a potential they could be in Smash. Because hmm. that's all it takes, basically, for them to ask kindly, since they've worked with that company before, for, you know, can we borrow the license for this? Here's your cut. So on and so It's Kratos. So, if... If he was ever on there, he's just in a bad version of the game. But, <laughs> I don't, I, yeah. I, no, I don't think... Who's... Uh, Jesus, who's that been? That, well, actually, that narrows it down to who hasn't it been. Basically, exactly. Yeah. It's easier to think of that. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, I'm so excited. So Baldur's Gate 3 looks really dope, although there's no real gameplay. It was all just pre-rendered nonsense of the guy turning into a... Mind flare. Exactly. John's favorite. And um, But the reason I'm excited, and I've raved about this game before... It's by the studio who made Divinity Original Sin 2, which is great because that game is one of the best, one of the absolute greatest RPGs I've played ever. And now they're going to be doing Baldur's Gate 3, which I played, I didn't play much of 1, I played the shit out of 2 with my brother, and then we have, like, the fact that it's, oh my god. At first I would have been like, if it was by the original studio, I'd have been like, let's see how they aged over time, if they're even alive. 
if they give it to a new studio, I would be like, uh, let's hope they don't give it to fucking, you know, like, you know, uh, Bioware or anything like that. What's wrong with Bioware? And then they give it to the people who made Divinity Original Sin 2. So, I'm excited. Absolutely stoked. Can't wait to see more actual game stuff. Yeah. But, looks great. Some more D&D goodness. So, there is that. I'm just sold because Mind Flare. There you go. Yeah. Then we have Elder Ring, also announced. We talked about last time the rumors of the Miyazaki, a.k.a. From Software, a.k.a. Dark Souls Dudes, and Martin, Mm -hmm. officially announced, trailer dropped, all narrative bullshit, very vague, we don't know much about the actual gameplay, so on and so forth, but from what they have mentioned vaguely, it does seem like your Dark Souls style game. So we'll see if it's fast-paced like Bloodborne or a little more... Uh, you know, defensive like uh, Dark Souls. Yeah, we'll see from there. But it is confirmed. Martin really is working from software. So Elder Ring, interesting. Yeah, we'll go from there. Yeah, the trailer goes on and on about the Elder Ring. This and you know, the stories in Dark Souls are cool and the lore is great and deep. But it's so boring to tell someone, in my opinion. No, it's one of those you have to collect it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Fantasy OS Star Online Two finally dropping on. The current platforms. Now, the interesting thing about that, that's the first Fantasy Star game to drop outside of Japan, or at least in the U.S., in like almost a decade, so yeah. there's that. Hmm. Uh, and then, of course, Microsoft announcing uh, that they acquired Double Fine Games. Nice. So Microsoft p- uh, picked up Minecraft, now they're picking up Double Fine, so we'll see what they do with Psychonauts 2 and if that affects what platform Psychonauts 2 will be dropping on, so we'll see from there. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Dropping some juicy, juicy details. So, uh, at the panel, which you, you missed that one, but basically when uh, Keanu Reeves came out... Yeah, I saw Bass and Keanu he, doing his... He came out and talked about the game and uh, uh, mentioned, you know, the details about it as if he gives a fuck about uh, Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> he may actually. He's in it. So, uh, they, show, they showed the clip. He's actually going to be in the game. Yeah. I, not as the protagonist, but as a character. Or maybe as a protagonist. They're, they just turned it all Kojima all of a sudden, and they're putting real actors in there, but uh, I'm okay, we'll see. It's Keanu, yeah. And then it's going to be dropping on, which this is the most important thing. Everyone's been wondering for years now when this is actually going to drop, so they finally attached a date to it, April 16th, 2020. Nice. So, we there we go. We were just last, uh, last cast that it might be next gen, right? We thought it, it was taking so long, so yeah. uh, what is it? Death Stranding, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Cyberpunk all saying, fuck you, we're not dead. <laughs> uh, by, by announcing some fucking solid shit. So there's uh, that. 2020's gonna be sick. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Now, here's the curious thing, right? This game's been in development for a while. Longer than the John Wick movies have even been a thing. Mm-hmm. Is his inclusion a thing that was kind of been there and just held back and um, now announced just happens to be after the John Wick hype? Or is it because of the John Wick hype? Uh, I think it depends. Two things. I think it depends on the character. And also, I think maybe because of John Wick. From the vibes, it seems like he's just going to be John Wick and fucking he's Cyberpunk. Just John so. Wicking with a metal arm, basically. Yeah. That'd be interesting to see. I mean, I like Keanu. Keanu is legit one of my favorite actors. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I, just, I don't care if people think he's a bad actor. I think he's a good actor. He's a good guy. He's, a good, he's like, definitely yeah, a good guy for good sure. Guy. Regardless yeah. of opinion on his acting skills, he's <laughs> definitely a good guy <laughs> for sure. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I think, Not, uh, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say I think it's going to be good, and I think it's interesting to see, like you said putting real actors in their Kojima stuff. We've had our... So we've said some good examples today, but we've talked about how some... We, that was the main topic of one of our podcasts in the past that that can... It's wondering whether it's necessary or it can be a good thing or a bad thing, but we'll see. Yeah. So far, these seem like good things. So we'll see. What if that new um, DC game is Nicolas Cage or Superman? Superman wearing a Ghost Rider mask. <laughs> But, um, like, like it's a mask. I don't, uh, let's see. Another trailer dropped. Uh, so you saw this very eerie looking setting. Looked very interesting, very gritty. You saw a dog running across. Now, when you see horror and dog, you think Silent Hill. So yep. a lot of people, of course, were like, oh shit. Oh my god, oh, Konami is uh, not a piece of shit. No, Konami's still a piece of shit. It's a Blair Witch Project game. So, Ugh. uh,. Hot on the heels of the brand new Blair Witch Project original <laughs> movie, um, they've decided, you know what everyone's screaming about uh, since that brand new Blair Witch Project movie? We didn't need a game. Now, anyways, the game looks interesting, but there's a very vague trailer, so we'll see. Yeah, that's what uh, I but A game Blair, by a 20-year-old well, property. Yeah, it was like, ah, okay, Blair Witch game now? Like... Oh, what if it's a time for? Or what if it's because oh, God, there's a third? Oh, God, my God. damn it! Stop! 
They do need to stop that. Uh, Gears 5 is uh, going to come out on September 10th. Speaking of things that people want, uh, Gears <laughs> 5 is going to be on out on September 10th. And what a great tie-in DLC. Such a relevant tie-in DLC. The brand new Terminator movie coming out, Dark Fate, will be having a tie-in DLC with Gears 5. Why? I don't fucking know. That's so weird. I don't know. I, why? I, I, I don't get yeah, like. You, you heard me earlier, you know, how do you reinvigorate one dying franchise? Use another dying franchise. Yep, exactly. Uh, we got a big, hefty section coming out. Several details coming out on Google hefty, Stadia. Hefty, hefty. Google Stadia, the very controversial uh, console, we'll call it, that a lot of people are wondering if it's even viable, because it requires one hell of an internet connection. Even Google Fiber seems to, like, just, on a perfect connection, be able really? to handle it. But that's basically it, which most people I know don't have Google Fiber. I do. Uh, but that means barely, I'd be able to barely run it. So uh, other details that came out, that's all the speculation, but other details that came out is going to be $10 a subscription per month. Typical $10 bullshit. Look at your bill and see how much $10 a shit subscription. Unless you're, of course, the... Um, I'm not going to lie. I do, uh, I do leech onto a few people's accounts, but not entirely all. I would say there's a few of them. What is it? I, I, I have a joint... Joint, as in, like, I, I use it. Uh, Hulu and a few others. Um, so thanks to you guys who, I think it's all like one dude probably, Shafes, uh, that lets me use those accounts. So you're a hero. But even then, on the ones I pay, I'm talking about, like, no, I probably spend at least 80 I probably I probably spend at least eighty dollars on subscription based bullshit. So uh, a month. So Shit, now you another thing. What do I have? It's uh, it's a bit I'm Netflix not, and uh, I don't, yeah Xbox Probably Live the, or are you on the year plan with that one? No, I pop a year. In fact, I think I need to renew. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's maybe like fifty bucks. It a month. can add up. Um, my point is, a lot of you out there, look at your subscription. Sh- it adds up. So this would be another ten dollar bit. I'm not being that guy to be like every ten dollars. I mean, it does count. Um, so I guess I am being that guy. But my whole point is, is it going to be worth your $10? Yeah. For me, if you're paying $1,000 a month on subscriptions, as long as you're happy with it and it's delivering what you want, fuck it. If you can do that, then you clearly 10 bucks is nothing. <laughs> exactly. So uh, there's going to be two versions, a uh, free-to-play version. Of course, you still have to buy the controller, which is 70 bucks, And a $130 Founders Edition. We're going to get into that in a second, what that actually um, will contain. Uh, if you want to play it this year, you got to get the Founders Edition. Anyone else will have to wait till 2020 for the open, you know, obviously it's a masked beta test, essentially. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, some games that are going to be launching on Stadia, Baldur's Gate 3, Ghost Recon Breakout, Division 2, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Doom, Doom Eternal, uh, Tomb Raider Trilogy, the current one, uh, Final Fantasy 15, Darksiders Genesis, Metro Exodus, and quite a few more. The interesting thing about Metro Exodus is the fact that it's an Epic Games Store exclusive, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> Fuck Epic. If you get the Founders Edition for 130 bucks, mm-hmm. it's actually not a bad deal. Yeah, someone works you get, get a Chromecast Ultra, which I have. It's Ooh. to run 4K streaming, including nice. the gaming on there. That's already 60 bucks right there. Yeah. The Stadia Controller, 70 bucks. Already done, basically, yeah, at that point. There you go. Then you also get Destiny 2, including the brand new expansion coming out. Okay. All of Destiny 2 complete. A three-month subscription for you and a three-month subscription for a friend. Not a bad deal for 130 That's, bucks when yeah, you look at it that I, way. I might get this. Do you have to pre-order this? No. Oh, yes. Uh, you do, but you still have a lot of time. It's not coming out anytime soon. Is, does it have to be a game stuff? <laughs> no, God, no. This is this is real game stuff, so uh, it doesn't. That, that, that so we'll doesn't see. sound bad. That sounds pretty cool. Again, it, it's got a good idea. We'll just see if it can run on people's internet. So That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. We'll see. Because you got to understand, your stream... I've said you got to understand like a million times about it. Obviously, you guys understand, but... Uh, but you gotta understand. You gotta understand the the bandwidth you're streaming. You have no actual physical game, and you're not downloading shit on your hard drive. You're streaming this big ass fucking high res game. Yeah. So like Destiny Two, that seems I think that's a bit like wild. That's gigs. that's really ambitious. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, Apex Legends Season Two. We'll see if they can they can be the the comeback kid. They're not bad, uh, and they're still doing pretty good. It's just a bit stale in the original Battle Pass. Yeah. That much has not been unveiled whether or not that'll be um, fixed or better in this minion. But it does drop July 2nd. It'll have a ranked mode. And it'll also have a brand new weapon called the L-Star Light Machine Gun. Cool. Which is special ability, other than being really strong, is that it can break down doors. 
No shit. So that'll be really interesting. A uh, new mechanic that'll be introduced Ooh. in the game. Now they will only be in care packages, as they are extremely OP, even according to the developer. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Respawn's pretty good at balancing the game, so yeah. hopefully they, they also announce a brand new legend, massive legend called Watson. She's a defensive character whose special power is to put up electrical fences to block opponents from getting to where they are trying to get to. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. And her lore insert is the fact that her father and her her family in general has something to do with the whole idea of the arena and lore to begin with, a lot of the tech side of things. So yeah. we'll see uh, kind of building an Overwatch, not as interesting uh, <laughs> Overwatch style thing, but we'll see. It's unfair to say. I mean, it's probably not as interesting as Overwatch, but... We'll see. I mean, Overwatch is pretty damn lore rich, and Apex is kind of like uh, like Dark Overwatch Souls did the sense. thing where like it's so lore rich without mu- not much lore. If you right? took all the cutscenes and all the actual official canon lore aside, the stuff that's just uttered in between characters, mm-hmm. you basically just piece it together. It's like a good grimoire, essentially. Yeah. Uh, Destiny. <laughs> Jedi Fallen Order trailer. So there's been a lot of mixed reception to that trailer. It does look good. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it does. But I gotta side with Sterling, other than the fact that I always have his dick in my mouth, is that in today's industry, you can't be too careful of, you might not get what you see. Looks hype, who knows when you get there. Yeah. And he also did make a really good point, and now of course, this is a bit bandwagoning on me, but I do get where he's coming from, even if I can't exactly relate, where he did make a good point that in a lot of that gameplay footage that they did show... There wasn't anything really dick bending, which is kind of what like the hype at first respawn, brand new Star Wars game that isn't shitty. It's still EA, but no microtransactions. Um, which he also did say to take with a grain of salt because it might not be the Randy Pitchford microtransaction, but there still might be microtransactions. Yeah. Um But he did make a good point that like there really wasn't anything in the trailer that made me like scream. Yeah, I'm not like I'm like oh that's cool new Star Wars, uh, but it's not like when I see some games like when I saw the Baldur's Gate three trailer and found out who was developing it where I was like fuck like that got me hyped. Yeah, this didn't quite give me those vibes, and I get where he's coming from on that, but it does look fine. It is respawn. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I mean it's probably going to be a good game, but like you said, be I'm, wary. Uh, I'm not in today's like, industry. Oh, I'm not about to rip my dick off over jerking off to this game. Exactly. Bethesda's panel was also today. So we heard about the Fallout 76 news I already brought up. Uh, they didn't talk about the canvas bags there, but uh, they did talk about the Battle Royale mode. But what's the first thing they do when they bust out? Like, you got to get the crowd... What's up? I, was just, I, think I, saw, I think it was Jim who tweeted um, about Bethesda with the, um, the the collector's edition for Doom Eternal. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> is it going to be a canvas bag? Basically. Um, so... so what is when you first get out there on E3 or at any show, you gotta fucking rip it open. Mm-hmm. When you get out there, your first song, your first announcement, that better be a banger. Maybe not your best one because you got to say that. Yeah, but it better be a banger, right? Paid for the hype, what does so. Bethesda do when they first come out? The first thing Todd Coward does is he goes, Sets up his box. "Guys, here we go." I'm sorry, sorry that clipped the mic, guys. Here we go. Blades is coming to Switch. Cool. The free-to-play microtransaction-ridden nonsense. Which, so, when Todd... Todd obviously always lies, but... (laughs) The thing that Todd Howard... When Blades first was announced, he announced at the... uh, It may have been E3, actually. He announced on stage that Blades was going to be a pure Elder Scrolls experience. It's riddled with timers and microtransactions. I don't remember any of that being in any of the fucking Elder Scrolls you, you games. You don't remember having to buy it or to have to pay to unlock all or the Or wait dragons? 16 hours to open a chest? No, I don't. Um, anyway, so he announced that nonsense is coming to Switch. Why? No one fucking wants that. Yeah. But it is. Uh, so that was how they Somehow kicked everything open. Somehow it's um, That's one of the only things I got from the fucking Bethesda battle, because fuck them. <laughs> uh, Borderlands 2. Yes, Borderlands 2. Just dropped some DLC. For free. 15 years later. <laughs> uh, it raises the level cap to 80 with the patch. And it's a brand new uh, DLC to tie in, to lead you into what's going on in Borderlands 3. Called Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary. So, cool. Uh, is it just going to be Randy Pitchford? I'm honestly uh, surprised it was free. <laughs> I mean, that's fuck asses. But I feel like they're just trying to like... Settle like stoke the like like calm the flames down. Because they've been stoked so much by the recent news. I'm not buying it, Pitchford. I'm not getting three. <laughs> fuck off. 
Uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I'm excited. Ooh, Ori and the Blind Forest is a fantastic, Forest, beautiful game. game. So, so great sequel coming out February 2020. Prepare those wallets because a lot of 2020 titles are already dropping. Right. So here we I'm go. Mapping it out in my head. That was a great, uh, great, great game. Um, Ori is cool. An interesting title that was uh, shown at the Microsoft panel as well. I wrote it wrong on here. I wrote Minecraft. <laughs> it's Minecraft Dungeons. It's a Diablo-like spin-off Minecraft game. Yet another Diablo type. All right, a little top-down. So we'll see. Uh, but it has the Minecraft aesthetic, Minecraft feel, but has real RPG stats, and it'll be interesting. Now, did Very you just curious. write it wrong on purpose? I just wrote it wrong. Write Minecraft. Because it's Dungeons. Like. Oh, that. Um, no. Yeah. It almost looks like I wrote Minecraft, so I want to watch Sherlock. Minecraft. But, um, yeah. DOA 6 announcing some guest characters again. My Shira Nui, who appeared in DOA 5, one of my favorites of King of Fighters, is going to be making a return, but with her little friend from King of Fighters as well, Kula. So that's really interesting. DOA 6 is apparently pretty fine, even though they lied about taking the sex out. Uh, oh well. Like I said, people have to understand that if... <laughs> here we go again with understanding. I'm basically saying you're all retards. Um, you can't, you don't say I can't say that. You can't say uh, that. So... Basically, uh, I can't ironically. Um, so, what people uh, don't under, what people really don't time. understand, and I really feel like people don't understand this, mm-hmm. is that DOA would not have been as big as it is now if it wasn't for the sexy. Yeah, jiggle physics. Man. It would have just That's... been another fucking fighter or a Tekken clone or whatever they would have fucking called it. Um, it has to be there. And to me, I think DOA 6 is a solid game. And it has the sexy. Oh, well. Who Can we get? Shit. It's been there for fucking since Dreamcast. Yeah. Even though it didn't look that good on Dreamcast, but fuck it. Can we get over that? But anyways, I'm excited. Cool guest characters. The guest characters are sometimes a little OP in the DOA series, so a little fucked. But I like my and cool is all, cool also. So there's that. Um, Nino Kuni, awesome uh, Studio Ghibli uh, RPG, mm-hmm. going to be ported to the Switch and have a uh, remaster on PS4 and PC. Appropriately so. so. Very, very nice. cool. Excited. Can't wait to pick that up on Switch. Great game. And Nino Kuni 2, of course, is going to be coming out. So I'm assuming it's going to come out on all platforms. Yep. Uh, Blizzard announced recently, not announced officially, but uh, one of the dudes who work there did mention that they have canceled a shooter that's been in development for two years and just feel that it can't compete with Overwatch and they don't want to make a flop and kill themselves. So yeah. they're just like, fuck it, let's just kill the project. So, yeah, fuck it, no point in it. Yeah, so they're just obviously still all in on Overwatch. That's still making money despite the people, the fact that people are still making fun of the fact that their numbers have dropped over time. But it's still huge. Numbers diminishing happens to everyone, including WoW. Yeah. But when you go from 10 million to 7 million, it's still It's kind insane. of negligible. I mean, yeah. Overwatch is still pretty loyal. So there still you go. Still with shitty randos on the, on the comp, comp. Right. And wow, did I? Is that? It? I feel like we've been on the air forever, but we're actually we haven't been on for that long, and we're already at the end. Well, fuck it then. All right, Unless no. I skipped the page. No, did uh, I? Don't didn't think we... I did. I think I got all of it. Well, we didn't uh, talk it's just about, um, the, we got uh, What did we not talk Dark about? Dark Siders. Oh shit! Yeah, we did not talk about Dark Siders. Dark Siders, yeah. Yeah, Darksiders is hype. Uh, interesting that they go that route. See, when they said there was going to be a new Darksiders game, I thought it was going to be another Darksiders game. Yeah. But they went with a whole different style. I mean, I hate to keep saying it's Diablo style or Diablo-esque again. Oops, let me turn on the bottom of my phone because I'm trying to look up the um, other things just in case we don't forget about them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it looks interesting. I hope that it looks like it plays really fine and smooth. So, hopefully, crossing my fingers on that one. Uh, we also saw... Oh, Halo Man. Here, take over for a second. Halo Man. All What's right. going on? Thoughts, so, on, thoughts uh, on Halo trailer before mm, we go to the final topic. Because mm, John had thoughts when he got here. God damn it. I love Halo. I always have. Always will. Since the beginning. I played Halo 2 first. Just, come on, 343. You you were supposed to be the... You, you, you name yourself after a character in the game. You, you promise so much. You, you give us the Master Chief Collection, which took fucking ages to fix, but, you know, we stuck by you. What are you doing? What, what, what am I seeing here? What, what, what is, is, is this, uh, you know, uh, 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 Private Dustin Echoes of the Spirit of Fire? Where is Chief? Why is he in space? What, what happened at the end of Fire? What, 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 I, fuck, I don't even remember. Oh, uh, you know, Cortana, Cortana's laughing and the, the, there's a halo that's activating in the distance. What the yeah, fuck was up with that? Ah, um, ah, ah, <laughs> I know, ah. right? Um, yeah, uh, people are speculating this is zero four. It's not zero four. 
that's not threshold. Obviously. To be fair, guys, for those of you who are who are following this, thumbs up. Uh, for those of you who aren't, th- I'm with you. So I have no idea what 04 <laughs> yeah, any yeah, of this yeah, shit sorry. means. But um, no, but go for it though. No, no, no. no, no, no I'm, going, I'm just going on a tangent here. Yeah, we're just filling space. We're stretching. No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't think that's installation 04. I think it's 07, in my personal opinion, for a long list of reasons that I could get into, but I won't because we're just covering the topic of gaming here. Um, I, I want to be excited. I want to have all the hype in the world for Halo Infinite, but it's it's one of those things where, I, I you know, we, we as the fan, the, the fan base has been shit on by the lies that were Hunt the Truth and the just complete turd storm that is Halo 5. You know, let me go fight the same boss six times with increasing difficulties. That's fun. That's what I want for my, 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 my FPS. <laughs> um, it, it just... I'm going to have to play it, and I, I, I'm, that's it. I'm just going to have to play it. I want to see more. Um, as I said last time, I don't think this is going to be Halo 6. I think this is part of a, a, a mini story arc they're going to use to try and get back on track since the comics kind of fucked over the story a little bit and the games kind of continued there. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my, my hot take on that. I, give me more. I'm glad the Chief's back. Yeah, you know, I, I share the same hype as the guy in the, the, the trailer, but, like, what, what am I looking at? What am I looking at here? You know? So, yeah, we'll Sorry. see. Kinda, we, kinda no, no, you're good. no, 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 I, I couldn't have covered that, so you needed to cover that. But, yeah, we'll see. Chief's cool guy. Yeah, I love Chief, man. That's why I'm like, just give me give me a good story. That's what I want. I'm sure the gameplay's going to be great. It looks pretty. It looks great. But give me a good story. That's what we're here for. That's why we love the Chief. Exactly. So... Following into our final topic, remember, if you guys want to shoot us an email, hit us up at disconnectedcastmail at gmail.com. Once again, that's disconnectedcastmail at gmail.com. And the final topic is going to be, and it really actually is a split party on this one, is E3 necessary? So, with the way social media and everything has evolved over time, mm-hmm. there's a lot of debate uh, and, and great arguments on either side, is E3 still necessary? So... Of course, you have tradition. Everyone meets up there. I mean, it's become more... It's obviously a press-exclusive thing now, but mm-hmm. everyone goes out there. It's a whole fun time. Everyone just fucking spills out all their shit, admits everything that's coming up and coming out. Um, except Sony. <laughs> except for Sony. But, you know, it's been just the way it's been, right? Mm-hmm. But this tradition always mean It doesn't always equate, and sometimes never equates, practicality. Uh, it's a lot of money to run E3, and it's a lot of time and resources. Um, Sony's basically shown with how much... People are still paying attention to Sony's announcements that you don't even got to be there to have just as much impact yeah. as these announcements that are being tweeted anyways. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of the debate is, um, can you, would, you know, you have all these extra funds because it is expensive to run and show up and, you know, think about, you know, renting the space, vendor, showing out there, flight, all this stuff. Could that money be better put into other things, maybe projects, maybe things where things are lacking, funding there. But then you have the other side, it's like, would the corporation even do that anyways? Wouldn't that money just end up in the pockets of some asshole? Yeah. Um, maybe it is necessary to all meet up to kind of organize all this stuff. Uh, maybe there'd be no difference if it's gone. Um, what do you think personally on E3's kind of like effect and impact then and now? And do you, where do you stand on the... Uh, is E3 necessary or unnecessary? You're talking to me? Um, so, I, I think that the social media aspect could negate its purpose, but it's one of those things where it's not necessarily a negative that it exists. Like, you know, last week, uh, last cast, I said, you know, it's not like it's the Olympics. It's not like it completely destroys whatever city it comes to. In fact, it could bolster the economy for, what, the week that it's there? Ether's a week long? Yeah. Um, I think it's neat. Uh, It's cool to be able to come out and showcase the games and get some actual hands-on time. But on the flip side, you know, I've been subscribed to Game Informer for a couple, off and on for a couple years. I see that it's not... It, it's not impossible for game journalists to go to dev studios and get hands on time any old time of the year. You know, the, the that's a really good point too. I, I was so concentrated on the fanfare, mm-hmm. I didn't think about the fact that you're right. Um, 
I can see the arguments, even though this is kind of counter to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I can see the arguments where the people who are like, well, it's more convenient for all the journalists to meet up in one spot and try all the demos back to back to back to back to back to back to back. So it just made me think. Sorry, I, I just no, didn't no, even think about right, that yeah. aspect of it even. I just kept thinking of all the, it's just a big party. It's, I mean, that, that, that honestly leads me to my next point. It's kind of, it's kind of a, uh, not, not superfluous, um, it's kind of a deluge of information mm -hmm. for a game journalist. Because you go to E3 and you play, you know, you get hands-on time with Halo Infinite and Baldur's Gate and Borderlands 3 and uh, Division 2. I don't know if that's out yet. I don't think it's out yet. It's yeah, out yeah yet. it is, but it's, it's fine. Um, but just for example, you, yeah. you have all these games that you have to play and write your piece on. Yeah, you're right. The fly a lot from... is going to get lost in, you know, in, in the, the, you're going to have the wheat and you're going to have the chaff. Some games you're going to focus more on and some games are just going to get cast aside. Uh, it's just the way it is. I think stretching it out, having the journalists just go to the dev studios over the course of the year would give more focus on the games and give a better opinion. Because it's it's, it's a high-stress environment to, to write about all these games and try to get the first break and the, the best hot take. Um, but on the flip side, I think it is kind of cool that all the journalists get to come together and you know meet up with their buddies and you know have fun, get some cool merch. Um, here's my G Fuel plug of this episode. Uh, I know that they were having a uh, booth there for the new uh, Vampire game. I forgot what it, the name is. I, I got the email. But they were showcasing their, their new uh, flavor. Vampire the Masquerade? Oh. No, I don't oh. think it's... It's some other game. I think it's like an action game. But they were showcasing their new uh, flavor typo to hype it for when it comes out. Um, so there's stuff like that. You know, you, you get to try things before the general public. Which I guess as a gaming journalist you would. Just in, in general. In general, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it creates any kind of negative impact on where it is by existing, but I also don't see much of a point for it anymore. Yeah, it kind of, of is yeah, it's just a nostalgia point. We're kind of hopping both sides, but I kind of don't. I kind of see. That's why I said both sides have some good points. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I guess honestly, if I had to pick a side, I'm more pro E3. Like, yeah, sure, let it continue. It's not hurting anyone, but. That's um, that's my take, and that's why I just it's it's why I don't it's not that I don't I'm going to take a stance by the end of my sentence and I ramble on about that. But yeah, of course. I'm, I'm, I'm going to it's I'm not trying to stay in the middle because I'm trying to be you know fucking uh, appeasing Neutral, everyone. Yeah, it's just... But the reason I do is because it both sides really do have some decent arguments. Yeah. Um, so, you, so without trying to piggyback off your stuff too much, I feel that, you, because you, you brought up some things that made me think, you know, I was kind of thinking about it on the surface and you brought up a, little, a few deeper points. Mm -hmm. For me, I would be okay with it going away if mm -hmm. that money really did go towards bettering certain things. Raising the dev salaries, putting more resources into a second or third game that they can work on at a time. Mm -hmm. Whatever. However, if it would just go to corporate greed or just be some, you know, thrown away bullshit or wasted, fuck it, keep it either going. It's iconic. It's fine. Yeah. Like you said, it ain't killing, it ain't hurting nobody. Yeah. So, yeah. I, that's, that's my thing. So, uh, in that case, like I said, if... The money, if we're in a perfect world situation and the money will be used properly, I say do away with it. So that's the stance I would be on. Which it wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, so. That's so then, yeah, what I'm really saying is keep it. <laughs> but, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, you made some good points, you know. And like you said, though, the practicality of people, even though it would give more fair and intimate um, time with the games, mm -hmm. the logistics of going to like 300 studios in a year or something like that would be like wild. So, it's like, ridiculous. it's also yeah. hard. So, yeah, E3 kind of just seems to be, there is a point to it after all. Even. Even though things could just be tweeted for a more hands-on effect, kind of necessary. It's almost so. like a Meccan pilgrimage for the, the gaming community. Mm -hmm. And also, before we close out, there was rumors of a Dragon Ball Z RPG around for a while now. Action RPG, excuse me. And it's been announced. Can you guess what the interesting topic of the game is going to be, Mr. John? The interesting topic? Um... Got me. It's about Goku. The game is called Dragon Ball Z what? Kakarot. What? And it's a brand new action RPG. What? <laughs> I know. 
Huh? <laughs> fucking hell. Fuck. Uh, okay, First you cool. have like 12 Gokus and Dragon Ball Fighters, and then now you fucking like, next game is fucking fuck, fuck, man. We Goku get it. Again. All right, yeah, let's go. Yeah, Goku's He's the Pikachu cool. of Dragon Ball Z. We get it. Even fuck. Well, they even... I mean, even Eevee got his own standalone. I mean... Yeah, that'd be like Vegeta getting mind. his own standalone. Yeah. Which, which, which would be great. I'd rather he fucking play a Vegeta it. game. <laughs> Give me a Majin Vegeta game where he oh doesn't go but good and just fucking gets powerful and kills Kakarot. <laughs> Give me that game. By Rockstar. Ooh, yes. <laughs> fucking Rockstar Crunch. By the way, everyone, watch uh, Jim's latest video about why Rockstar's bullshit methods are sometimes not worth the game that comes out, even if it's a great game. Check out that video. Yeah, I haven't played um, Red Dead because I don't care. There you go. All right, so that's that. Where can our lovely listeners find you, Mr. John? Uh, I normally... Not the young doctor yourself. Right. Where on the internet can they find you, Mr. John? Right. I, I normally plug my IG, but I haven't... I, like, deleted it forever it's, ago. It's so gone. I mean, it's there, but I don't go on. So, at Evil Dead Guy Some, on Twitter. Okay, there you I'm go. on there every day. Message me. Send me memes. There you go. Criticize my opinions. Whatever. And I am on at ZD Rocker at most social media platforms. You can find my other projects at SlipMationEntertainment.com. And you can find our past, current, and future episodes at DisconnectedCast.com. Yep. Until so, uh, next episode, until next week, we'll have more E3 news for you guys then. Sure this time it's going to be late instead of fresh, like now. So enjoy that whenever we do get it to you, as well as what other shenanigans, whatever, uh, you know, any uh, great CEOs may be up to in the next week, we'll report on that. Until next week, we'll see you guys then. See ya. Have a good week, y'all.